Uh, and I'll just explain it to sure. you very simply. Uh, generally, I like to use a spinning outfit, you know, when I'm doing this. And I've got actually, uh, you know, a spinning rod and a spinning reel here. This is a six foot medium light. I like a little flex in there. Sure. But uh, I got to fill with fire line, uh, which is the six pound, two pound diameter. And then I've got a little barrel swivel attached right here. And then at the end, I've got a mono line. So because the fire line's that fire green or that lime green. Right, and right. And uh, so I like a little clear line at the bottom, but uh, this is live bait fishing. You know, I'm using extra large fat head minnows, like you see here, with a number two bait hook. And this is the real key. There's uh, a lot of rock and gravel in the Fox River. So I'm basically using what they call mojo weight. It's one of the All most right. snagless weights I've ever seen. If I put a split shot here and I casted this thing out and was dragging it along this rocky bottom, I'd be hung up all the time. For some reason, the mojo weight, it just about comes through everything. So this is a 16th ounce. We've got low current flow here today, low river level. So a lot of times it's a 16th ounce. If the river's higher, I'll go to an eighth ounce. And very rarely do I have to go any higher no, than that. Right. The other thing I've got here, I call this a little depth indicator. It's just a lime green piece of thread that I can slide up and down the line. and. Basically, if I'm vertical jigging where I've got the minnow on the bottom and the water's up here, I sort of set this right at the water level, and then any time I go back to jigging, yeah, I'll know just about when my minnow's at oh, the yeah, bottom. Oh, yeah, sure. And, uh, you know, because this will stop right at the water line, and it'll tell me I'm very, that the minnow's very, very close to the bottom. And that's it. That's the basic yeah. rigging. It Not too complicated, really, either. Yeah, the it? other thing is, is that, you know, if I'm vertical jigging or dabbling along the banks, uh, this is the way I do it. If I get into a situation where there's a rock pile or something that causes me to where I have to cast out, I'll just take a small bobber with me. This is about a three-quarter inch diameter bobber. And I'll just clip it on there, nothing fancy. That'll allow me to suspend the bait where I have to cast it out and bring it over a, a snag-infested area or get into places that I normally oh, can't sure. reach. Now, is that locked on there, or? No, I've actually, I, I don't, you know, the yes. old thing used to be you, you turn it on there and you twist it over yeah, a few I, times. Mm -hmm. I'm on and off very quickly, so I just. I locked it on Just basically, yeah, it's got that little hook in right, it. Right, right. And I just go like that and let the thing go, and then I can slide it up and down, or yeah. I can slide oh, yeah. it down and yeah. adjust it. and. Yeah, during the stage, so this way you can really control the depth that that's going when it goes yeah, across. Yeah, I can float it over okay. objects or I can cast out the objects and have it hang in there that, in areas that I can't dabble where I can't physically sure. get right over the area. And uh, so it works out real well. And then when I'm done doing it, I want to go back to dabbling, I can just take it off and stick it back in my pocket and I'm back to vertical jigging. Well, I noticed one thing too. You're, it does take a lot of equipment. You got a few things in case you lose yeah. something, so you can keep right on going down the shore. Yeah, one of know? the biggest things I always bring is a tape measure because I like to measure the size of the smallmouth bass we catch. <laughs> I'm you for know, that. Every once in a while, we get one that goes about 18 inches, yeah. and that's pretty that's nice a for nice fishing a municipality, a river system here I like know. the Fox River. That's great.